One of the largest tributary of the Brahmaputra River from the state of Nagaland is the mighty Doyang River. Situated in the extreme northeastern part of India, the state of Nagaland has a geographical area of 16,579 square kilometers. It is a part of the Indo-Malayan Global Biodiversity Hotspot and also the Eastern Himalayan Endemic Bird Area, indicative of the region's rich biological wealth. Surrounded by a large number of small villages, this area is enriched with varieties of fish and a vast diversity of flora and fauna. The Doyang River Valley serves as a source of livelihood to the people and the many creatures that inhabit it. Among the many creatures that depend on this river valley for their livelihood is one of the most mysterious passage migrants of India, a beautiful raptor of the falcon family called the Amor Falcon. The Amor Falcon is an insectivorous bird species of the Siberian region. It breeds in Amur land and countries like Russia, China, Mongolia, Manchuria, Korea and Japan. The males are characteristically sooty dark while the females have a typical falcon hat pattern and are duller about with dark scaly markings on white underparts. They nest in deserted or new nests of magpies, crows and other raptors in trees. Amor falcons have extraordinary impact on prey populations, including potential pests such as grasshoppers, locusts, beetles and termites. According to a study carried out by Hank Bowman, Craig Sims and Hannah Lynn Duplessis, the global Amor falcon population, while in Africa, is estimated to consume 1,800 tons of prey every season and hence a significant reduction of the Amur population would therefore be likely to have far-reaching impact on agriculture and the environment. Similarly, since these birds stay in Nagaland for about 40 to 50 days, they help in reducing the insect pest population and indirectly protect the crops. Around October-November, winter sets in over the northern hemisphere and temperature falls below freezing point. Water freezes over and so various life forms start hibernating. Survival becomes a concern for non-hibernating birds like the Amur falcons. They adopt a different but difficult strategy for survival. They undertake an epic marathon migration covering a long distance of around 22,000 kilometers during their onward and backward elliptical journey. It is one of the longest distances covered by any bird. They go to southern African countries in another hemisphere where summer sets in by that time. While undertaking such a long journey, their fat reserves get depleted. To replenish this, they stop at several places in the northeastern part of India. In Nagaland, the Doyang Reservoir catchment in Woka district is their principal roosting site and is of extraordinary significance because of the countless number of birds roosting there. India being a signatory of Convention of Nightlist Species, it is the basic duty of the state government to protect this particular bird. And uh, uh, the Doyang uh, in Woka district is having the largest congregation of this Amur Falcon bird. Nick Williams, the program coordinator of Raptors MOU of the Convention on Migratory Species, put the number of birds at more than a million. The global population estimated till date 
puts it at a number much below this. Recently, the Convention of the Great Fish Species, the scientists have visited. They have counted nearly one million uh, amur falcon in one single uh, roosting site of Putuyan. And they have declared Nagaland as a falcon capital of the world. However, it is sad to mention that instead of welcoming these birds, man in all his greed has become the greatest marauder of all. Thousands of these beautiful creatures were captured or killed every day. Hunters lay permanent nets close to the water reservoir to trap the birds when they come to roost during late evenings or when they leave early in the morning. Besides killing them for meat, the captured birds were kept alive in mosquito nets or cane baskets so that they could be sold alive in markets. It comes of no surprise that a community that is so intricately linked to hunting by tradition would resort to such large-scale harvest of the Amors. Apart from their fertile lands being inundated and compelled to cultivate on tougher and steeper areas, the presence of elephants also poses an insurmountable problem to the villagers. Where Amor falcon roasting uh, place is uh, there is also a man, uh, man elephant conflict zone. So this twin, twin problems we have to tackle. For this, we have uh, tied up with the Wildlife Trust of India, inventory survey of those main elephant conflict areas is going on. I think uh, we will be able to find out, uh, hammer out uh, some solution to this problem. Moreover, the villagers of Pangti asserted that there is less catch of fish during that season. Due to these varied reasons, the people have neither any means of earning income to pay for their children's education, nor to meet the expenditure for their festival, Tokfu Emong, which is celebrated annually on the 7th of November, and also for the Christmas celebrations. Thus, the villagers consider the plentiful Amur birds during this season as manna from heaven, because they come at a time when there seem to be no other way out. In 2012, a Bangalore-based NGO, Conservation India, came out with a report of mass killing of the Amor falcons in the Doyang catchment area, mostly in Pangti village. This report was acknowledged by reputed print and electronic media at the national and international levels. It served to draw the attention of the central and state governments and conservationists all across the continent. But owing to the socio-economic circumstances of the region, it received a mixed response. It, however, succeeded in accelerating the conservation movement in Nagaland. In Wokhau, the forest department deployed frontline staff at the roosting sites and market areas to control the trapping, killing, and selling of the birds. All the other local law enforcement agencies, such as village councils, police and district administration, were alerted for further necessary action to stop recurrence. A subcommittee consisting of all the Amur Falcon bearing territorial divisional forest officers and wildlife wardens was constituted to monitor and supervise the situation at field level. In 2013, the Nagaland Forest Department shifted their efforts from Kanglatu in Mokokchung District to Doyang in Woka District, following the shift of the roosting site to Doyang by the Amur Falcons. Prior to this, the Amurs faced similar problems in Kanglatu, but responding to the call of conservation, 
the community came forward and Kanglatu became a successful biodiversity reserve community and hunting became history. The year 2013 witnessed better strategies and intensified efforts. The Forest Department moved ahead with a multi-pronged strategy of awareness, conception, strict enforcement and alternate livelihood generation. Village councils of all Pangti, Sangro and Asha villages signed a memorandum of understanding with NGOs, Natural Nagas and Wildlife Trust of India for providing a safe passage to the Amur Falcons. Wildlife Trust of India also has an MOU with the Forest Department for biodiversity conservation in Nagaland. And Nagaland the Forest Department has taken up a lot of awareness programs like meetings, workshops and we have also conducted one-to-one -one meetings in the villages also and along the way along with the NGOs. Owing to the vibrant social life in the villages, various kinds of awareness stratagems were adopted by the forest department. Different groups of people had to be addressed differently at different times. In preparation of the arrival of this magnificent birds, the forest department sounded a state-level alert and began to work stealthily well in advance. Strategies for conserving and providing a safe passage to the Amours were worked out. Intimation was given to the administration and the police for their cooperation to effectively implement these strategies. The church also played an important role in shouldering the responsibility of moral or ethical education of the society there. The local communities as a whole were involved in awareness seminars carried out by the Forest Department, Natural Nagas and Wildlife Trust of India, covering different aspects of Amur Falcon conservation. These were means of facilitating a two-way interaction to note the grievances of people and come up with viable solutions. Open-air wildlife movie screenings and community discussions were amongst the other means to reach out to people. To maintain the enthusiasm of people, which was heightened after all the awareness activities and also for bringing the youth into the mainstream, the Save Amor Falcon Marathon was organized by the Forest Department along with the Pangti Students Union in honor of the marathon migration of the Amor Falcon. This event was held on October 19, 2013, which received an effusive response from the villagers with more than 180 male and female participants of all ages. Equal efforts were also put on the enforcement front. District level coordination committee for controlling wildlife crime was formed in all the districts involving village council, district administration, police, NGOs, revenue department, and other prominent community organizations. Forest Protection Force, an armed wing of the forest department, was deployed in Doyang for the whole migration season, and we worked round the clock for effective prevention of the traffic and killing of birds. They started their work well in advance to have a deterrent effect. Patrolling, raids, surprise checks and camping around the roosting sites were the most effective enforcement measures for the protection of the Amor Falcons. The Natural Nagas and Wildlife Trust of India also joined in the efforts and established a protection camp as well as in carrying out active patrolling. The Chief Minister of Nagaland, Mr. Nipu Ryo himself, denounced the hunting of any wildlife and warned the villages about punitive measures of withholding grants and aid. Notifications regarding the same were relayed by the Chief Secretary and the Director of Rural Development 
for implementation during the migratory season. It is our duty to preserve during, I mean before, when we don't know conservation and the importance of these animals. Nagas were being killing for eating. But today, we are broadly educated society. We are no more primitive. And we can do without killing these beautiful animals. We can survive. The forest department backed a lot on this action and issued thousands of posters carrying the message of conservation on one side and the concerned notifications on the other. Village council members signed a tripartite memorandum of understanding with the Wildlife Trust of India and Natural Nagas to stop wide-scale hunting of Amol falcons in the Doyang Reservoir. Following the MOU and the Rapid Action Program, Bird for Bird program was implemented to address the meat requirement and another program called Grain for Grain to compensate the losses incurred due to wild elephants. Also, a protection squad was formed involving the villages. According to them, a plan to give economic incentives to the landowners of the roosting sites is also in the offing. The principal chief conservator of forest and head of forest force of Nagaland, Mr. Lokeshwara Rao, visited Doyang and addressed all stakeholders with a promise of bringing the village under Biodiversity Conservation Reserve and their livelihood grievances to collaborate with Nagaland Livelihood Mission, Tourism, Fisheries, etc., and of strengthened trust between the community and the departments. The fishermen who hunt the birds during this lean fishing season were pacified and this resulted in constructive cooperation for giving safe passage to the birds. A conservation action plan of the Amor Falcon, which includes components like involvement in protection work, self-help groups, microfinancing, ecotourism, habitat improvement and research, have also been prepared and submitted to the government by the Chief Wildlife Warden and is currently awaiting approval. The outcome of all the aforementioned efforts put in by everyone concerned resulted in the enthusiastic participation of those fishermen who were once hunters in a joint mission of satellite tagging of few individuals of the Amor Falcon. This was an initiative of the Wildlife Institute of India, Dehradun, Raptors MOU of the Convention on Migratory Species, Bird Life International Hungary, and the Department of Forest, Ecology, Environment and Wildlife, Nagaland. Altogether, 28 birds were ringed, and from among these, three individuals were selected and PTT tagged, one male named Naga and two females named Woka and Pankti after the state, district and village respectively. First thing I'd like to say is thank you very much to the Naga people for allowing us uh, to come here to visit Nagaland and to catch um, and trap these birds. We've today put three satellite transmitters on three birds and they all flew off beautifully. We hope we'll hear, hear from them again very soon because we've already sent the message to Hungary who's going to be taking the DAS satellite data down, analyzing it and uploading it onto the website. So we hope in the next few days we'll have that up available for people to see. We want a map of exactly the route of the bird and if there's any other information we get, um, it, you know, it'll tell us about the quality of the location as well. So sometimes it's not, such, you know, not so narrow the focus of the information. Um, but it'll be interesting to see. What we really want to see is what the birds are doing here well, for the last few days it spends here in um, Nagaland, Correct. and then to see how it traverses across India, which states it goes through, then the transfer across into across the Indian Ocean, into Africa, and probably down to South Africa. These birds were all tagged and released on 7th November 2013. As of now, all PTTs are active, 
and the birds have long since reached southern Africa. In Nagaland, a major chunk of the land is under community control and a special status is attributed to Nagaland by Article 371A of the Indian Constitution. As such, implementation of even the Wildlife Protection Act 1972 hasn't been very effective so far. Therefore, conservation efforts that are taken up along with people's support alone will prove fruitful in the long run. In view of the land holding system in the state, the community-based conservation of wildlife is uh, most appropriate for the state as mandated under Wildlife Protection Act 1972. There are a number of uh, community reserves uh, being declared by the villagers uh, where they have uh, adopted resolutions to ban killing, hunting of wildlife, even locking of uh, forests. This is a, a positive sign for the state. The perception of wildlife uh, management in the state has been changed drastically. There is a positive change. The mindset of the villagers are I mean, it's very positive towards wildlife conservation in the state. Apart from this forest department, the NGOs like Nagaland, uh, Wildlife Protection Trust and uh, Natural Nagas and even Wildlife Trust of India has played a major role in, uh, to pursue the villages and the real heroes of the whole conservation movement is the uh, villagers, basically the communities. They have sacrificed their their livelihood and they have uh, conserved this particular uh, bird. From what has been observed and experienced during these past years, these three villages, especially Pangti village, have initiated an unprecedented and unique process and it deserves to be acknowledged, credited and encouraged for the future. Uh, greater for the successful protection of Amor Falcon should go to the villagers because they have sacrificed their uh, forest, their land, their resources, their time, their energy. And this is a positive sign. And the villagers should take all the credit, not uh, other, even the department or the other agency cannot take the credit because the villagers own the land. Everything belongs to them. So they have sacrificed their livelihood. So the creditors will go to the villagers. These villagers are looking for some positive external inputs and support and have even affirmed, often during interactions, that given alternative livelihood options which can help generate income to meet their needs, they would assuredly refrain from hunting of wild animals and birds. Given that they have paved a way for effective conservation, it is crucial at this stage to take prompt steps towards securing their confidence and leaving no chances by addressing their needs in return for their cooperation. It is imperative to bear in mind that a lack of interest and enthusiasm from the government and non-government agencies could lead to disenchantment and distrust by the local people. Moreover, the youth of these villages are taking a keen interest in conservation activities, but they are also faced with the problems of unemployment. In such a scenario, facilitating and guiding them to take a greater interest in conservation and linking this in some way to livelihood options can build a strong and effective community-based conservation movement in Nagaland. Apart from being known as the land of festivals, Nagaland was recently declared as the falcon capital of the world by the Raptors MOU of the Convention on Migratory Species because a staggering number of Amor falcons visit this land during the months of October and November every year.